The tympanogram can be a great tool when you're suspicious about tympanic membrane or middle ear abnormalities. The eardrum, like any membrane, will vibrate best when there's equal pressure on both sides. By sending pressure waves into the ear canal and measuring the amount of vibrations of the tympanic membrane, the tympanogram can 1. Measure compliance or mobility of the tympanic membrane, 2. Measure the pressure within the middle ear, or 3. Measure the volume of the external auditory canal. Many people say that getting an airtight seal is the hardest part about working a tympanometer. I like to start with larger earplugs and work my way smaller if needed. Don't let the buttons confuse you. Press test to run a test, then R or L to save as right or left ear. The graph looks something like this. With pressure along the x-axis and eardrum compliance or movement on the y-axis. Over here it shows the external ear canal volume. A normal tympanogram is A-shaped with its peak inside the box. The peak marks the pressure in the middle ear. Normal pressure is around zero on the x-axis. What if a tympanogram is not normal? If the peak is really high, this means there's normal pressure in the middle ear, but the tympanic membrane is floppy. This could be from 1. Ossicular disruption or 2. A thin tympanic membrane such as when it's healing over after a perforation. If the peak is really low, this means there's normal pressure in the middle ear, but the tympanic membrane itself is stiff. This could be from thickening of the tympanic membrane from scarring, middle ear effusion, or ossicular stiffening. If there's no peak, that means there's little movement at all pressures. The problem is not high air pressure in the middle ear but fluid or something else keeping the tympanic membrane from vibrating. This is highly specific and sensitive for middle ear fluid. It could also be from cerumen impaction, perforated tympanic membrane, stenosis of ear canal, connective tissue formation around the ossicles, scouring or thickening of the eardrums, normal working tympanic membrane tubes, cholesteatoma, or middle ear tumor. A good otoscopic examination combined with the ear canal volume can help you with your differential diagnosis. Low volume implies a blocked canal. You should see this. High volume implies you're measuring the external canal and the middle ear too. If the peak is significantly shifted, negative 180 or more, that means it's negative pressure in the middle ear. This is typically from eustachian tube dysfunction with or without middle ear fluid. Let's practice. Pause the video at each question. When you're ready for the answer, push play. The best way to know what a normal ear looks like is to look at a lot of ears. This right tympanic membrane has some inflammation, but still has normal landmarks. Case number one. An 18-month-old toddler presents with one week of rhinorrhea, cough, and congestion. Her parents report she's irritable, sleeping restlessly, and not eating well. Overnight, she develops a fever. She attends daycare, and both parents smoke. On examination, signs are found consistent with a viral respiratory infection, including rhinorrhea and congestion. The toddler appears irritable and apprehensive and has a fever. When you look into the ear, this is what you see. A classic ear infection, acute otitis media. Six weeks later, the kiddo comes back for a recheck. That ear looks like this. What do you see? No erythema, but the tympanic membrane is bulging. What do you think the tympanogram will look like? Hmm, no peak. It's flat and bottomed out. Type B. This makes sense. The fluid is preventing movement of the eardrum. To make sure, we will look at the canal volume. Just as expected, normal volume. We follow this kid. At the 24-month well child check, what do you see? There's a fluid level in an air bubble. Serious otitis. At two and a half years old, what do you see? There's a purulent middle ear effusion. The tympanic membrane has lost landmarks. At 30 months old, this is a bullous tympanic membrane. 
By age 3, this kid has recurrent serous otitis, recurrent otitis media, delayed language skills. He's sent to the ENT for PE tubes. Now the child's age 6. He had the PE tubes put in 3 years earlier and they've never been taken out. He's complaining of pressure in the ear. What would a tympanogram show? That's right, flat with high canal volumes. This tells us that the tympanic membrane tube is patent. Let's look at some new ears. What do you see here? Chronic perforation. What type of tympanogram would you expect? Flat with high canal volumes. What do you see here? There's a small perforation, likely secondary to a recent tympanostomy. All right, here's a new case. 33-year-old male complains of decreased hearing on the left. He initially thought his jawbone earphones broke, but then he realized the problem was the ear itself. He has a history of chronic ear infections as a kid. Finally, was on suppressive therapy for a few years. Weber test shows a conductive hearing loss. You pull out your otoscope. What do you see? Bottom is scarred. Upper is retracted and covering bone. You get out the tympanometer. How would you interpret this tympanogram? Pressure is normal, but it's type AS. This implies stiff tympanic movement. Let's look at some more ears. What do you see here? Cholesteatoma. It could cause type A or type AS tympanographs. What do you see here? Chronic perforation. Chronic perforation would cause a flat type B tympanograph with large volume. We know that a tympanogram can help us confirm and diagnose suspected ear problems, but when should we not perform one? If there's a Fallman otitis externa, then you might want to hold off. Infants under 7 months of age have elastic external auditory canals. This may act like a compliant tympanic membrane, but normal results could be useful. Now it's time for you to get out there and get practicing on real patients. After using this a couple times, you'll quickly get used to it. I want to put out a special thanks to Dr. Sherry Tamborello. She put together the original slideshow that I based this video off of. Dr. Jeff MD here. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Dr. Doodle, 